Okay, so last uh, the last keynote from Spotify has said that they were going to migrate part of their architecture to GEvent and that they really enjoyed uh, working with GEvent so far. And Dennis here is going to talk us about uh, basics of working with GEvent. Uh, so, uh, it's all right, right, the microphone? So, GVAT, uh, it's a networking library, coroutine-based networking library. It used to write network demons, network lines, web applications. It has a WSG server, so it, uh, it works well with most of the Python web frameworks available. It's a small library. It doesn't think to include all possible protocol implementations into it except for the most basic ones like uh, DNS and HTTP. But it can be as useful as larger frameworks, which also features, because it has an ability to run networking code that is already there in Python standard library, or any Python package that is written for Python, uh, for Python software. It's a relatively young project. It started two years ago as a rewrite of Eventlet. Uh, both Eventlet and GVAN provide uh, lightweight, uh, cooperatively scheduled so called grid threads that feel like they built into the runtime of the language, being a library feature. Uh, the magic that makes it possible is available in the Internet extension. This is a C Python extension. Internet uses some of the uh, stack switching code from Speckless Python, which is a separate distribution of Python, or it supports of, uh, of origins. GVent uses Greenlet, but it can also be made uh, uh, work on Speckless. They are powerful. They, uh, it's also powerful enough to remove all. Uh, the next major version is going to be 1.0. I replaced uh, the Event Loop to prevent the sleeper. I've replaced the resolver with the Bogan DNS with CRs. The end result is that it works much better now. Uh, the changes are mostly internal, so migrating your application shouldn't be problem from GVN0 to GVN1. And uh, the annoyances that we had in GVN0, like Python signal module didn't work, uh, resolver ignored DC hosts and uh, DC resolve, uh, they are gone in, the, uh, in this uh, unreleased version. Uh, the internals that I'm going to describe, uh, I'm going to describe how the internals work in 1.0 because there have been some really and it's just easier and nicer to explain. So the plan for the talk is to introduce coroutines and the use case for them in the context of the networking application. Then once you have uh, once you have coroutines, I'll explain how GVent works, how it uses them. I will go briefly through GVent API and then we cover some uh, some of the community contributions. So if you want to make a networking application, you have two choices. And uh, whatever you choose affects the design of your application from bottom to top, because unfortunately, it's not the low-level details that you can just hide behind a nice abstraction. Our first choice is simpler. Blocking sockets means if you call connect, it actually connects and then returns to, your, to the core. Uh, it uh, means that it does some I.O. before returning, and that might take some time. Most of the uh, standard library uses open sockets, so most of the web frameworks depend on why we are not on open sockets. There are a lot more packages for PyPy that use open sockets. If you want multiple connections with uh, open sockets, you need to use multiple threads, and it might be a good option for your app, especially if the number of threads is small. It has an advantage of being portable. You don't need additional packages like GVAN. Uh, the OS threads are preemptive, so you need logs to protect the shared data, and you need the libraries to do the same, or to be, um, you need them to be thread safe. Uh, the threads are a bit memory hungry. The stack is allocated up from about several megabytes, and that puts a uh, limit to how much threads you can create on CD2 bit machine before you run out of space mm -hmm. in the ballpark of one and two thousand. I also deal, and that can, has, uh, can have interesting effects in multi-core because of your contention 
the foremost can become worse and worse over a single vote. Uh, most high performance stuff in Python world and outside Python world uses uh, non blocking software. This non blocking API, you pull a request, you make a request to some uh, socket API, and it only succeeds if it's available, if the dance was available immediately. If not, I uh, expect it to retry the call when uh, the descriptor is ready. And there are a number of syscalls available to check for descriptor readiness, select all people, a queue. Uh, people on KQ are especially interesting for networking apps in general and for web applications because they scale well with the number of total dimensions. The algorithmic complexity is proportional to the number of active descriptors, not the number of total descriptors like is the case with select and pull. So the application become uh, much different now. The chat is now owned by the event tool, which continuously pulls the descriptors and uh, executes a callback. The application is actually a set of callbacks that subscribe to events, uh, subscribe uh, callbacks, says call me later when this happens. Um, yeah. It's, uh, uh, in this callback, you must be really quick, otherwise you will block the whole thread, the whole event tool. So you cannot use all the nice blocking stuff, <coughs> stuff like available in CDD and they cannot use most of the web frameworks. This is the reason why, say, Twisted and Tornado came with their own uh, web, web, uh, web stuff. <coughs> so what Chivan offers you is a sort of a mix of the, of the two approaches with uh, benefits of the two approaches. The green chats are scalable as callbacks, but they switch context only on, at the uh, IO points. Uh, these are cooperative threads. That means that uh, you can avoid logs most of the time, you don't have queue problems, and you can even use it as a drop in replacement for your multi driven application. And uh, that's what's the uh, core is for. But uh, where's the core? If you look at Wikipedia, the definition is, is a subroutine that can be paused and resumed. But that definition is kind of broad. Even in Python world, there are uh, three very different uh, implementation of cartons. For example, multi-shot cartons is the kind of cartons that you can pause and resume, but then resume from the same point multiple times. You can even uh, pick up the cartoon and then unpick up the different machine and resume there on several machines. But stackless Python has those kind of cartons. Symmetric cartons are the kind that uh, yield to the parent always yield control to the target. Uh, Python generators are example of symmetric origins. Uh, asymmetric origins, uh, you will specify which origin you want to switch to. Relet, for example, is an asymmetric origin. You always say, I want to switch to this relet. This difference, uh, they actually uh, enough, uh, they actually equivalent to power. If you have one, you can build an asymmetric. The most important property and that what makes Chiba wonderful is when the coroutines are stackful. Uh, stackful coroutines have an ability to save the whole stack while non-stackful coroutines like generators can only save a single thread. That means you have uh, to know in advance whether the single call is a generator or a function and uh, you have to do yield at all levels. You cannot hide it behind a function. You cannot use a uh, standard other modules you cannot use uh, web frameworks. Basically, you only got synchronous execution, but uh, a number of uh, traits shared with non token approach. Uh, Greenlet, on the other hand, is a uh, stackful protein. So you can call a function, and that internal function does switching, and then the whole stack is saved. This is a much more powerful abstraction, and we use that in Jiva. So, what happens when you switch from a relay. This is your stack. It has Python frames on it, it has C frames on it. When you just create a agreement, not much happens, just object get initialized. But when it first switch the agreement, it remembers its position, the current position of the stack, and then marks it as stack stop. Uh, then you okay, those
children. Okay, okay. More. Now when you switch back, uh, this that segment that is devoted to the latest screen lab is saved from the heap, and then stack pointer is reset back to the original uh, value has before switching to this new girl. So now we have a G1 which is inactive and on the heap, and you have stack which is in exact same state as it was before switching to Greenlab. So this parent Greenlab uh, continues execution. Of course, it can now grow its own frames, and that also needs saving, but the Greenlab module does this, does this clever bookkeeping to make sure it all works out all right. Uh, this is quite fast. On this uh, laptop, I can create switch in and switch out uh, 60,000 greenlets per second. Of course, these are trivial greenlets, and the bigger your stack, the more uh, memory you need to move. But still, switching is usually uh, the small part where the application spends time. Unlike threads, which require allocating, uh, allocating the stack up front, it uses the memory efficiently to only allocate the, uh, the size necessary. The stack switching is done with some assembler code, and this assembler code is uh, written for a platform, so the portability is somewhat limited. Uh, yeah, if you use Greenlet and you want to make cross platform up, you should check on all the platforms you want to deploy. Usually not a problem for several applications, and the majority of the platforms are supported. Uh, there is another problem that there's a structure cap called PyTrack state, and it is shared between Greenlets. So if you an exception handler and you switch into another greenlet, the new greenlet will see the exception that you had before. But luckily in Gmail, the greenlet is in such a way that we can walk around about that safe and restore the proper exception information for uh, The portability concern can be addressed somewhat with swap context. If I have a POSIX API, I could do this kind of user level switching. Uh, swap context doesn't do the stack slicing, but instead it also requires you allocating the memory to stack up front, so it has memory requirement, requirements comparable with threads, but still it's user level threads and might be faster for real IO applications. It also happens to be uh, uh, slower than Greenlet because it does a syscall or switch. Uh, there is a really small subset of Greenlet implemented soft context, mostly for benchmark, benchmark. And Martin, not for me, but this uh, my partner, so. and uh, yeah, he did the checks. So now we have the call for abstraction uh, for quality. Now we can use it to uh, <coughs> achieve it. So the core achievement is also as an event loop, like any other golden framework. We use an uh, event loop written in C called Liba. It's actually a new and 1.0 before that it is legal one. And uh, yeah, this, uh, it doesn't, it's not aware of greenlets, it's uh, callback stuff, like you have in Twisted, for example. So Libbeth provides you with all kind of watchers, level triggering, item notifications, timeout signals, item list notifications. And uh, you can start the watcher, pass a function, and it will call it uh, when this function, uh, when that uh, event happened that this watcher watches. Uh, the main difference with this API from the last version is that function is for uh, path to start, and that uh, means that we can clear it and stop, and that uh, makes, uh, removes strip counts from, uh, rip counts and cycles from JVM. So this new version has the advantage of not creating any rip count cycles. So uh, with this uh, non-blocking framework, take control of your thread. With uh, Greenlet, you can take control back. What you do is you run the event loop in a special dedicated Greenlet. It's called Hub. It's created lazily by the initial Greenlet. When you first use a GVN API, it creates Hub, initializes event loop on it. Uh, hub is a Greenlet, so you can switch it. The interesting method that the hub has is wait. Wait is a, is a method that you pass a watcher to it, and then it uh, switches out the current limit until 
that motion has a For example, if you want to implement cooperative sleep, you just post a timer and initialize, initialize with a number of seconds, full weight, and that uh, gives you cooperative sleep that's next to current greenlight uh, sleep for, for this number of seconds. The weight implementation is also very simple. Just switch to greenlight, but before you do that, uh, establish a callback to switch back. The actual implementation is a little bit more complex, not much, but what it does is it checks that a switch is legit, that it's really the switch that is catching and not some other switch from some other misbehaving in real life. It's not really strictly necessary if you just use JVN API, but it, it's good to have there because the problems that you get if you switch wrong in some real life are really annoying. You don't have a right traceback, you have traceback that's unrelated. An early event lab has those kind of problems, and this uh, wasn't, uh, was really frustrating. So you have cooperative sleep. Uh, now you can implement cooperative socket. What's cooperative socket? It's a kind of socket that looks like blocking socket. We saw the blocking method, blocking method, but actually wraps a non blocking power descriptor. So when you call receive a non blocking power descriptor, it can fail with the uh, retry again, you know, or you would block. That's no problem, we just call wait function with IO watcher and then we pause the screen until the script is ready and try to actually this implementation is failed but we see. So in that manner we implement uh, all of the socket module. Not only socket object but also op but also all DNS functions. Uh, we use CRS for that, so when you call block and DNS function from GVN socket, it actually does asynchronous uh, resolve it when I use the CRs, and then bugs the result, formats the result in such a way that it looks like you go to a regular get item form that calls my name. And also SSL object, and there are also even a select function which is sometimes useful in tests. This is a complete example. First we do monkey patching. Monkey patching means you replace the standard socket with uh, this cooperative socket. Then you can use the, uh, the libraries that use it. So, for example, URL lib2. Here you just spawn an additional uh, internet to do a current download of two, two pages. Looks very much like a uh, like trivial uh, solution. So you call monkey patch all, it does, it replaces socket, SSL, sleep, select, all the things that it knows about. It also replaces trivial. Uh, functions to make them relate based. So you can you have a multi training application the monkey patch monkey patch all is enough to make it relate based. People sometimes uh, avoid doing that, but there are really no reason to not to have a block and socket in your G program. Because even if you think you don't use the socket, some library might and when it does it will block your complete application. So you've seen the uh, spam function. This is just a shortcut for creating a greenlet and starting it. This greenlet with capital G is a subclass of that low-level greenlet, so it also has switch method and draw method, but you never use those in the achievement application. It also has some methods you would expect from a thread of process, like wait for it to complete or Rising exceptionally and then wait for it to die. Uh, most of the API in GVN is like that. It does something and then it waits for it to complete, like a joint here until start as a, an exception as asynchronous. If you want to limit the, the time it waits, you can, in most cases, just pass timeout parameter. If that's not enough, you can use timeout class to implement your own timeouts. In the first example, if this little piece of code doesn't finish in five seconds, the timeout exception is raised. In the second example, with the false and second argument, not only the timeout exception is raised inside the, uh, the width block, but it's silent outside, so it seems like the block just interrupted after five seconds. Of course, timeout are regular exceptions, so they can be caught by accept all clause, and something you can't do much about, except inspect your code and check that it doesn't do that. It also cannot interrupt uh, the code that is CPU busy that doesn't yield to the hub. But uh, you can use SigilArm for that if you really 
往这个上升。Uh, the pool class is for managing green lights in the room. <coughs> uh, it also has spawn method, and when you call pool spawn, the green light becomes uh, part of this pool. A uh, pool can have a limit of how many green lights it can have. For example, in this case, 10,000. And when it reaches 10,000 active connections, it starts uh, active green lights, which are, in this case, the connections. It, the spawn just blocks until there is a crystal. The API of the spawn uh, of pool is inspired by multiprocessing pool. There are lots of methods like IMAP, IMAP and other methods already present in the multiprocessor. This is uh, actually not a good way to implement the server. It has a number of flaws. So you just uh, you can use the string server plus, which will spawn for each kind of connection in your green lab. And, uh, it's very easy to create your own servers. You can even use it with pools. Just pass it the pool argument, and uh, it will use the pool to spawn relays. It can wrap your connection in SSL if you pass the relevant arguments. There are a number of classes to do asynchronous and synchronous communication between relays. Almost all of them has, uh, have the API inspired from the Python standard library. You, if you use it, you know event you know, queue, priority queue, to enable queue. There are even blocks, although in most cases you don't need blocks. Sometimes you do. For example, if you have a WebSocket implementation and you want send method, you, you might want to add a block to send method so that uh, oh, there, are, there are several producers and they don't compete with each other. It, it doesn't make sense for Zimmer pets protocols, but WebSocket is a message based that makes sense. Uh, sense. Uh, we also have Whiskey Server. In the uh, zero version, there are two tools. One is the fast based on the event server. Another is for Python that uh, has more features. One of the features that missing from the event is keep alive. So in the 1.0 version, we kind of lack uh, this fast server because we don't use the event, maybe we won't at all. So this is something that needs to be done. Now this is just an in-process server, and if you want to deploy, there is a free fork uh, server called GUnit. You just say, this is my application, I want to use GUnit whiskey, I want a number of local processes, and it uh, runs the application in this uh, multi-process environment. Uh, as I said, you can use uh, all the modules implemented in Python with sockets. For example, I use Redis by this event every day. But uh, most of the database drivers are in C. So you cannot use uh, MySQL DB, but there are a few drivers written uh, specifically for GVAN by a company called ESM that uh, use GVAN. PG2 is a wrapper for uh, C library that works with uh, Postgres. It has generic support for proteins. What it does is that it can call in callback that blocks uh, until the descriptor is ready. And it just supply a small function and it automatically supports JSON. <coughs> there are a lot uh, more interesting uh, third party contributions. There is WebSocket protocol implementation, socket IO backend. Socket.io is web sockets implemented over different transports. HTTP law testing tools, uh, proxies, TCP proxies, HTTP proxies. There is integration with zero message queue, and people love doing stuff with zero message queue. There are, uh, for example, some distributed map previews, fast, fast, uh, fast uh, value inspired uh, task queue, and there are more projects on GitHub. I just to keep up the both off your serum queue and the yeah, g one together. If you follow this URL, there's some more or less complete uh, list of the projects that I'm maintaining. This is one of the users, of the early users of uh, g one And the, the, this is information from the owner about how they operate. So they used to use Twisted in a single process, but when the number of connections reached 5,000, the performance become slow, so he wrote it in Java and was able to scale the single process until about 10,000. Uh, 
uh, dimensions. Now he has uh, multiple servers, which are mostly idle, and the estimation that they use 60 kilobytes per connection. So the plan for 1.0 is to provide this uh, fast USB server, which is currently missing. Also, documentation is lacking. A few more features that would be, I think, would be nice to have, but they don't necessarily go to this. Uh, so to summarize, carotenes are easy to use, uh, easy to use stressed, could be as efficient as uh, any other non-blocking solution. As any other non-blocking framework, Fox code of the application is eyeball. He then tries to be the standard way to do Greenland based uh, stuff in Python, so it uses all the standard API to learn Q and all that stuff. And it works with uh, socket module is working on top of socket. Thank you. Hope you got any questions. There's a lot of time for questions. Um, anybody has a question? <coughs> interested if uh, the application which I want to rewrite for GUDAN has to be thread safe because it doesn't seem to me like it has to. But are there any uh, limits? Like if if I have, yeah, I think that's my question. Uh, in most cases, uh, you don't need to be thread safe. You need to be greenlit safe. This is a much more relaxed requirements than than the threads because. You know, sun is switched at the certain points. You know that this operation is happening most of the time. So most of the time, uh, in practice, you don't need to do anything. Maybe sometimes you do, but that's really rare. You're not and, gonna... and another point is that it's already thread safe, and it's already thread safe. You're not going to have a problem incrementing an integer, but you get exposed to race conditions and sorts yeah, of concurrency okay. problems. Uh, Any other question? Um, I was wondering if you use the database drivers, will it also work in OREP, such as SQL? SQL, SQL opening? Ah, uh, SQL. I haven't, but uh, there are reports from users who have. But they were in the early days, they used MySQL and after they used MySQL because there were no C drivers. And some people report that they did that. Um, there were some uh, limitations in the two uh, different with the implementation on the yeah. previous version. And uh, I wanted to know if. Uh, that disappeared in the 1.0 version, and uh, and why uh, they are still there if uh, if they don't. Oh, I don't want them to disappear, uh, but the question is whether to continue to use the advantage HTTP server, which we still can do even though we switched to Java 2, or whether to write something new. Right? And to write something new, it will be much better than the old one. So, um, why would someone choose G event over event but why would why would you choose G event over event but over event but yes? Oh, there are lots of reasons, but I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason. Well, one of the reasons that uh, it was made there right is that having one event loop makes it, uh, let's say, debug it much better than with uh, all kinds of different event loops. Actually, I was working on PyEvent hub for event lab, and I couldn't make all of the hubs work, uh, work together. It's just too much work to make sure they're all the, the same and all little details. So I just dropped everything else and uh, we wrote some other stuff that I like. It's just, it's just a library, what can I say? <laughs>
Any other questions? Covering certainly a million questions. Uh, which minimum version of Python does it require? Uh, if you have the list of the five, you will define. Actually, for G10, I haven't supported to the four. But I'm not sure if I tested it in the latest release. But for the five, should work for mm -hmm. How easy or hard is it to integrate GN with the GTK even a GDK available. You mean completely use GDK available and don't use any of the people that stuff? Uh, yes. Well, with the zero version, it's, it's impossible. With this new version, you can provide your own implementation. So I don't know how it's easy because the interface is really inspired by Libra. But you can sort of imitate that and uh, it shouldn't get that hard. Uh, is there uh, some um, uh, new frameworks that are based on G11? I mean, HTTP uh, web framework or uh, adaptation or existing of existing ones? Web frameworks like uh, Django, this kind of framework. Well, uh, I'm not sure Tango can be asynchronous, maybe with some work, but if there are some uh, some work going on uh, with, uh, I mean, because G11 is, uh, is very low level, and uh, is there some web frameworks that tries to leverage uh, G11 to, uh, to, to provide something uh, more easy to, to use? Um, web frameworks can just use Gvent as a replacement for multi -trade. They don't. I don't know of any web frameworks that uses Gvent API, but it seems like it's two different levels. Gvent just gives you green threads and sockets, and uh, web frameworks just use whatever sockets they have and uh, whatever threads they have. I think he means to say that it's going to transparently use GMN. Yeah, yeah so, it's, so if you have uh, asynchronous drivers or your database and stuff, it's OK. Yeah. yeah. All right. Any other questions? One. What about the possible PyPy integration? As far as I know, PyPy has uh, separate branches for stackless support and for chip. So I think with stackless, you the, the most uh, the hardest part is Greenlight. If you have that, then uh, you can make something with you. So on that version of PyPy that supports stackless, you can have it. On that, that doesn't. Well, right now you can. Any more? That's cool. No. Okay. Um, next, uh, next talk is uh, Armin Ronacher. If I'm not mistaken.